everything in your life only becomes truly valuable when it is connected to purpose. Please write and look up. Let me explain that and then I give you the last. I hope God has spoken to you today. That means nothing in itself is truly valuable. It is only valuable to you relative to your perception. Eventually you will find out that what you admired and were happy about will no longer interest you. What makes things indefinitely valuable is their ability to serve purpose, not the things themselves. For instance, your certificate. Remember the first day you collected it, you were jumping up and down. Now you've not seen it for years. You don't even know where it is, honestly. And quite honestly, many do not care. Do you know why? Because until it is connected to purpose in itself, it will not profit you. Another example, strangely so, is the car that you buy. You can buy that car. Imagine you buy a car you cannot drive and there's nobody to drive you. Eventually, what was a blessing will annoy you because it is not serving purpose. The, the goal of that car is that it's able to move you to help you achieve your goals. But imagine with me that you buy a car, for instance, and someone puts it, uh, you know, to, to the drive Uber or Bolt with it for you, and something is coming with it, and you are using it to pay the school fees of your children. You see that that car becomes valuable because it is helping you serve a bigger purpose. Every time you come to God and say, give me, the question you hear from heaven is for what? Give me power, reply, for what? Let me make a name for myself. Make reference to Genesis 11. I don't waste that kind of thing. God will tell you I don't waste time on purposeless things. Nimrod Kush said, let us build a city and make a name for ourselves. And God said, that is not it. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding heart. Solomon, for what? I am young and you have given me leadership over a great people. Who but you is able to lead them. Give me an understanding heart that I may lead them and guide them in discretion. And God said you qualify. I will not only give you an understanding heart. I will give you riches, wealth and honor like no one has had. Listen to me. Everything you have in your life that cannot be connected to purpose will not only frustrate you, but can be used as a tool by the devil to destroy you, even if it is God that gave you. Beauty without purpose can be converted to a tool of destruction for both you and others. Intellect without, there's what we call evil genius. Is that true? People who God gave intelligence, but because it was not connected to divine purpose, can be used by the devil for your destruction. You watch how Satan used things that God gave men to destroy them. Samson was given an unusual ability to be strong, but he thought it was just strength. He did not know what that strength was supposed to be for. It was supposed to be that by his strength, he would become a judge over Israel. Everybody say purpose. One more time. Can I tell you, listen, ladies and gentlemen, most people do not know the importance of purpose. They just come and they say, well, I just want money. And you keep acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring. Then you make the mistake of the rich fool. You now build banks. In this case, a bank account. Starch them and say, my soul, find rest. And all of a sudden, they diagnose, respectfully speaking, that there is some sickness somewhere. And you find out that money cannot attend to it again. And they say the man has two weeks to leave. And now there are billions stacked there. He hid it from his wife, hid it from his children, hid it from himself, did not spend it. The kingdom was not blessed by it. It was kept there. Wealth without purpose. Make up your mind today that everything God gives you, you are going to connect it to divine purpose. Lord, why did you give me this lovely voice? There are many of you who are singing here, who when you hear the worship team sing, you smile because something, there is a connection. God gave you a wonderful voice. You should be singing his praises to the nations, but you are there just wondering, I'm sure God one day, my own is that I want to marry. That's my own. And God is saying, for what? <laughs> you see, I said marriage and I'm seeing people smile. <laughs> and now you are using God as a ladder to quickly get married. At least let me come to church. I know that in church, who knows what God can do? <laughs> are we together? 
All my own is to get, I just want a job, that's my own. I want to move from this one room to a three bedroom flat. Why? All my friends are living in duplexes and God says nonsense. That's too small a reason. You can fast from the lens of that lost, you will not get the hand of God. Let me tell you something, one secret to answered prayer is connect your desires to divine purpose. Let me repeat, connect your desires to divine purpose. Lord, give me a husband, give me a wife. You are not speaking his language. For what? Are we together? Lord, give me money. I want money and you are shouting for five minutes. All God is hearing is money, money. I said, calm down. This thing is the lost, is, is lost, it's not prayer. What do you want the money for? Lord, I've suffered, are you not seen? Mm -mm. I've suffered is not an answer. I can raise somebody to help you, but money will not touch your hand. When you have a need, he will give you. Will you agree? No, I want it in my hands. And God says, for what? But now watch this. As funny as this is, I hope you are learning. Father, I have learned by revelation and through the ministry of the teaching priest that financial resources are important for my living a comfortable life, important for participating in your kingdom advance agenda. Lord, I am available. That one prayer, I can tell you, expect a reply. Kingdom driven prayers are the kinds of prayers that receive answers. Lost driven prayers is simply carnality using spirituality to meet its need. Hallelujah. We pray competitive prayers. Lord, you have given this person, this lady that came when, when, now I'm here. Oh. Mm -mm. It's amazing. You just listen to the prayer of Christians, especially when they're alone. And you just be God yourself and be listening. Imagine that that prayer is coming to your throne. And just hear what the people are saying. And then at the end, we end it with, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. His name is mighty, no doubt. But that thing you have said needs editing. Father, I'm tired of not being anointed. The other day, I said, let the power of God will move now. And nobody fell. And God says, what for? What exactly? What does the falling do to you? It's because people are not falling that they are not inviting me. By now, my life would have been... Everything in life is only truly valuable when it is connected to purpose. In John 18 and verse 37, John 18, 37, give it to us please. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end, did you see it now? To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, Jesus said, I do not have any personal agenda on my own. I am here to bear witness to the truth. I am here to bear witness to the truth. For as long as John the Baptist was walking in purpose, nobody could kill him. When the assignment was done, he said himself that I may decrease, that he might increase. He now went into doing things that were not connected to purpose. And it landed him in prison, offense multiplied his tragedy, and he was beheaded. Not a wise way for someone who had worked with God. Everything I desire in my life, I always ask my question. I ask this question and, and from the depth of my heart, how does this that I want serve the purposes of the kingdom? I'm giving you a very superior spiritual orientation. It is not that God cannot lift you. Father, give me a global ministry. The question is for what? Lord, raise me like Esther. Bring Ahasuerus to come and marry me. It's not that God cannot bring a Hazarus, but for what? I just want the joy of being queen. And God said, ask Vashti. That's exactly how she was thinking. And that's why she left the palace. But I realized that the salvation of the Jews from her man and all those who are the enemies of God's process is depending on me. Therefore, take me to the palace. With speed, God will take you there. Believe what I'm telling you.
you find people's prayer answer to the degree to which it is connected to kingdom lost driven prayer whether in secret or in the open will always end you in destruction competitive prayer that one you just console yourself that you are praying you know our idea of winning on earth is that only one person must win because that is how we have been educated to believe winning so you outshine to win but in the kingdom all can be winners because winning is with respect to the will of God not with respect to who you rise above in our secular academic program you are only called a winner when you bring others down and you stand alone but in the kingdom you are not a winner when you bring others down you are a winner to the degree to which your life fulfills the will and the purposes of God is someone learning 